A word about the combinations of rotations. Uh, I said that the order of rotations matters. We're using this convention, which is we do x first, then y, then z. So this is called x, y, z fixed angles, but there's actually 12 possible combinations of rotations you could use. Um, but whatever rotation you use, I mean, a rotation matrix is always unique and it describes a unique rotation, but the convention will, will matter in terms of what angles you describe that with. I should mention this, sometimes you see this convention called Euler angles, um, and the difference is that instead of rotating about the fixed angles of one frame, we're rotating about the, the current axes, wherever they're pointing of the moving frame. So we start with B coincident with A, just like before. We rotate B about, let's say, the Z of B, and then rotate about the Y of B, and then the X of B. So each rotation takes place relative to the moving frame, not the fixed frame. And just like XYZ angles, fixed angles, there are 12 angles, possible conventions for Euler angles. It's useful sometimes to back out, given a rotation matrix, what are the angles, the XYZ fixed angles that would um, have produced that. So um, Craig, the Craig book derives this the uh, theta y you can get as the a tan 2. So this is the full arctangent that gives you a result from minus pi to plus pi, where this is the uh, x and that is the y. Um, note that we have a problem, though, if the cosine of theta sub y is 0, which occurs when theta y is plus or minus 90 degrees. So in that case, theta z is undefined. So we, are, we can arbitrarily pick a value for theta z. We're going to pick theta z equals 0. And in that case, we can um, compute the remaining angle theta x uniquely. So this is a problem um, if in certain optimization problems, if you were to hit the value of theta y uh, equals 90 degrees, then it's difficult to compute the value of theta z. So that's a disadvantage of this coordinate system, this convention. One final uh, convention for representative rotations that I'll talk about is the angle axis. So we can express any rotation as a rotation by angle theta about some axis, some unit vector k. And the Craig book derives the form of the rotation matrix given a unit vector uh, k and an angle theta. And also the um, equivalent uh, formulas to calculate theta and k given a rotation matrix. So this is um, it's kind of a nice re representation in the sense that we don't have that ambiguity, you know, when a when we hit, for example, in the XYZ axis, we had a problem with theta y equals 90 degrees. We do have a minor problem that a result of minus k minus theta gives you the same rotation as a positive k positive theta. But um, the, uh, the, three vector, the three angles, if you were to multiply the angle times k, would give you a, uh, essentially an omega vector, which would be a minimal axis for a 3D rotation, just three numbers.